So we get back, bear got in camp. Uh, the llama bag of food is just ripped, shredded wide open and spread everywhere. Both llamas are gone. See the other bull. He's on the left. Far left. The other bull's probably the one that came from up the draw. Joined him. Remember, we heard him at the last minute. He probably caught up to him. Do you think they were ever really on that far draw? They were just on the spine. Hold that thought. Just as we were sitting on our glassing point, debating on the best way to approach these elk, this hunt got turned on its head, and we encountered probably one of every backcountry hunter's worst nightmares. Unfortunately, we're self-filming, so we didn't capture all of this on film. Otherwise, we'd have a lot more dramatic footage to show you. But in about real time, 30 seconds from when we were watching these elk, we heard a jingling noise behind us, and everything was changed for the rest of the week. Well, we are in the dumps about probably as low as you can possibly be when you're hunting. So, you saw that action yesterday, and we were pretty pumped for today. And we went out probably 600 yards or so to our glassing point this morning. Watched a big herd bull take all his cows, moved right in front of us, dropped down in on this little finger. 
We were in there last night. We know how to get down there. We watched six or seven other bulls way off that we said, hey, we're going to attack those tomorrow. We're on our second full day of hunting, so, you know, we're pretty amped up. And we hear this clanking and clanking. We're like, what is going on? You have to come across this big rock shelf, like a rock slide to get to where we're at. And one of our llamas is running across it towards us, like right at us. And we're a long ways from camp. So our stomachs drop, obviously. It was running toward us and it even actually stood, looked like it was almost excited to see us. Um, how it knew where we were, I don't know, or if it was just sheer luck. So we wrangle him up and mind you, these are, they're held up by a long lanyard in a giant stake that you run down into the ground with a hammer. So to pull it out isn't good. So I told Jack, head back to camp, I'll keep watching these elk, blow bugle, something's wrong. And he gets back and rips a bugle and my stomach dropped because we thought bear killed the other one, but it's bad. So we get back, bear got in camp. Uh, the llama bag of food is just ripped, shredded wide open and spread everywhere. Both llamas are gone. We found the one. Now we've been looking for probably two hours with no success and uh, we're just going to keep gridding. Pretty awful feeling. Ruins your hunt and... You got a poor llama that's somewhere lost that you can't find. So keep gridding, not hunting. Try to find this thing. All right. Due to my part Native American 132nd that I believe I have on my grandmother's side, I just saved our hunt. Now, unfortunately, I cannot contact Jack. Llama Llama's back. I just hiked the ridge. I just checked my tracker. I was at a mile and a half. And I saw what looked like in the in the dirt was a line drag from that tip. So I followed it for about 50 yards and then it stopped. So I just stayed on a straight line. Sure enough, another 500 yards. Chippy over here. He's laying, hung up. This is stuck on a dead log. Head directly back over the saddle. Nowhere near where I would have been looking. <laughs> this is incredible. We're going to be able to hunt this evening. We've got bulls bedded. I'm not going to see Jack for a while now, though, because he said we'll meet back at 3 to 4. And I'm going to be back way before him, but he's going to be ecstatic. Because those bulls, the thermal should be shifted and we should be able to get down on them. Yeah, we lost a half a day of hunting, but I feel amazing. Because to lose this animal would have made me want to barf. I mean, we were sick to our stomach. We just sat in camp with our heads down because we're in the biggest country. You can go miles every direction on bluffs, rocks. This is incredible. This is the best feeling I've had in a long time. <laughs> All right, let's go. I hope we have some good footage for you tonight. Let's go. Now I wanna show you the drag marks that I saw, that I followed. And when it stopped, I veered off the trail because I thought it would still be dragging in this dirt. And it's like a, old skid trail for most of the time so it was hard compact i couldn't see it if you look really close see the drag mark it went for about 20 yards there and then stopped and i feel like he had to have peeled off and i thought it had to be him nobody's been up this trail no nothing no animals this is amazing <laughs> i have not felt that low ever in my life hunting and I've never felt this high ever in my life. Shooting many different animals, having success, this feels unreal. I, I'm literally elated. If Jack shoots a bull tonight, I mean, I'm, this would be one of the best days of my entire life. Top five. This is crazy. But he's definitely tired. He's walking real lethargic, real slow. I got to get back and get him some water. Hopefully he gets back to camp before he needs some. Whew. This is incredible. So... Jack doesn't know I found the llama. And he just came back sulking, just like I was. And sat down in the chair and put his head down. And I said, do you want any food? He said, no, I'm good. So we're gonna go surprise him. What do you think we were gonna do? There's a number of questions that you could... You motherfucker. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> 
Didn't you didn't you catch it when I said I thought you walked by us? Weren't you like who's he talking about plural? Just like fucking camp. You dickhead. That's what I called him when I found him. Is there by chance when you cross that peak up there, did you happen to hear me hollering up the canyon? You stopped dead nuts when I yelled. I thought I heard a bugle for a second. Then I turned around and looked. And then I yelled again loud. Hey! The wind you would, stood for a while. The wind would pick up and then let go. I'm like, man, was that? I bugle? almost was going to let off a couple of my 40 rounds because I knew you'd hear it and think, I got to go back because you didn't crest the hill yet. Oh. Uh, I made way faster ground. And once you get down there, you don't realize how far you can see up that dividing trail. Whoops. Where the fuck was he? I'll show you a map. Not close. Really far. Really far. Let's just say I made it a good ways to the truck. And I tracked really? him. I tracked him. I'll show you the video. Purely because he was dragging that green thing. I saw one 10-foot slither mark way down. And I'm like, oh my God, was that's God. The and then he veered off. I saw the thing, the, the, the green thing was sliding and went off the trail. Instead of hooking into... I don't want to say it, but instead of. Can you give us a one minute rundown of today's events, which unfolded to us doing what now? Uh, first flight, seeing lots of elk, watching one maybe go to bed up here that we're trying to stock. Next, thinking maybe people were creeping in on us, but it was really just our llamas that broke free. So we spent the next, I don't know, seven or eight hours, right? Seven or eight? Yep. Putting them back where they belong and trying to find the second one. So that's that's been the day so far. Now we're literally winging it. We don't know if these elk are still here. And we're checking the thermals the whole way down. And it's actually the death walk we did last night. And Jack had nightmares all night and didn't sleep very well thinking about it. It was horrific. And we're going right back down in. Wind's really good where we're at, but we don't know where the hell the elk are. They're not talking. They don't talk in this public land crap. They don't make any noise. They chuckle, and then they go hide in the woods. So we're literally winging it right now, and this will be the last stock for the evening, so we think. But then again, last night, day was over, and bull ripped off 150 yards from us. We didn't even know he was there. Yeah, right where we're going. So we're thinking he's back there, and it's probably the same bull. Or we hear nothing, and we hike out in the dark again over rocks. Cool. Well, we thought we stalked down to where we saw that bull and his cows head off to into a shady pocket on north-facing timber. But in all the hours of looking for the llamas and probably making a lot of noise trying to find them, they were nowhere to be seen. So, the day's hunt was a bust. We lost track of the elk, but we did find our llama. On the way back, even the grouse didn't want to cooperate. Managed to find a few, got a couple shots off, only came up with feathers. So, unfortunately, you it was it. a long hike in the dark back up over the rocks to camp. We burned an entire day, but managed to find our llama. However, we had lots of questions about where the elk were and what we were going to face in the days to come.